This is Kyle Martin Paintings. This girl is always on my mind. Not got my supplies laid out onto the table and I have this box which is an example for what we're getting into today. It's a very simple box. It opens on a single hinge, it holds paint in the palette area, and it has a white plexiglass mixing surface. These two arms connect to the front legs of a photography tripod and this creates a nice, stable, and sturdy shelf. The distance between these two arms was specific for an old tripod that I was using this box for, so part of the figuring I'm going to have to do today will be with finding the spacing for this new tripod that I just got. Instead of having just an open box where air can get in to dry out the paint on the palette, I'd be using this airtight sealed palette holder. This is something that I ordered from the UK and it took about two weeks to get here. Inside there is this blue gasket that keeps this palette airtight. From there I'm going to create a box that this airtight palette can sit into much like on this box where there's this hinge and then the mixing palette. I'm going to use a piece of plywood with that hinge and I'm gonna have a mixing palette right next door to the paint storage area. Then off to the other side of that, I'm hoping to hinge on an additional auxiliary palette. I don't know if it's gonna be wood yet or if that will be plexi as well, but I'm making that third shelf area and I might cut a hole in it to hold this new turpentine jar that I got. This is the Artwork Essentials turpentine jar. And so I'm going to have a nice little fold up palette that will attach directly to my new easel. All right, let's get started in making this new planner palette shelf. This is the first panel that I made, and I used these half inch pieces of square stock to create an area for that sealed pallet to nestle in onto the box. I then used a piano hinge so that it would be sturdy enough to support the weight of that sealed pallet filled with paint. The second panel that I created was the one that 
locks onto the photographer's tripod. And you can see it worked out pretty nicely. To create the round cuts, I used something called a drill saw. And then I just connected the lines with a ruler and used my jigsaw to cut that area out. And on the central palette, I used two binder clips to connect a paper palette for easy cleanup once I was done mixing. This is what the easel looks like, not including the sealed palette. This is the adjustable panel holder that I was using. It has a hot shoe, so you don't actually have to mount it to any sort of a plate to fit on the tripod. This will just fit on most modern tripods with a ball head as it is. And it's got a heavy duty knob on the back that will adjust it to any height. There's also rubber feet inside here that did a good job gripping the pallet. I got this for $7 on Amazon and it's a iPad or tablet holder. So it was kind of a creative use. The largest panel that you could use with this However, it was only 10 inches, so you could get away with a 10 by 12 inch panel or an 8 inch by 10 inch panel vertical, but nothing larger than that. I'm kind of being very businesslike right now. I'm passing people, walking up the steps, and uh, there's a lot of people out here today. There's some families playing. One kid just fell down right behind me, but it is beautiful. It's a nice, cool day today. As soon as I hopped up that last ridge and came over the rocks and I experienced the lake, it was just the kind of moment when, sort of like when you see the Grand Canyon for the first time. It's just, wow, breathtaking. Let's keep moving. It feels amazing to be up here on top of the bluff overlooking Devil's Lake while the wind is rushing in. I haven't felt this alive during a painting session in a long time. And that's one of the reasons that I wanted to come up here is just to rekindle that spark of life and energy. i
wind is actually pretty crazy out here this afternoon and when I set out I didn't realize it was going to be so windy but I did end up finishing two little paintings out here. A lot of people stopped and said hi to me today. That was pretty cool. Actually there was a couple of people sitting on some rocks just about 10 feet away from me on the other side of a pine tree and they had some sketchbooks out and they were doing some end plein air work as well. I got a chance to visit with them before they left and they're from Chicago and they're up here checking everything out. Here's the scene behind me that I painted. So I finished up the first painting and I decided that I have a little more ambition left in me but I made my way out here onto the tumbled rocks trail and I think that right behind me is going to make kind of a nice composition. The main thing I wanted to do was get my eyes out of the sun. I finished that one up and now I'm definitely in the shadow and there's no chance that there's going to be any sparkles of sun reflecting off the water in my eyes. This will be a nice cap off to my afternoon of painting out here at Devil's Lake. All right, I'm finishing up out here in the field. Had a really nice afternoon. This was a good idea to come out to Devil's Lake and paint today. I think you'll agree that my little painting of the tumbled rocks trail is really kind of fun. I might add a little bit more color into the water before I walk away. I had a couple nice interactions with people while I was out here as well. So I'm gonna change the color of the water in just one place and from there I'm gonna pack it up so thanks so much for being with me for this painting we'll do it again soon I didn't use this setup very much because I got a solvent container from N Plein Air Pro the makers of that Plein Air equipment and that only lasted for two painting sessions before the gasket fell out of it and it was useless beyond that so I have enjoyed using this Peshad box I don't find a use for this Prashad box very much, but hopefully you found some inspiration 
in seeing me build it. I mainly use the Soltec easel or the Beauport easel when I go out plein air painting. And I also have a few other DIY Peshad boxes that I use more often than this one. But this was a cool experiment and it led me to my next easel build, which I'll show in a future video. The cool thing about this Peshad box was that it would house that sealed pallet. And now I, I've gotten rid of that sealed pallet because it's just, it's very large and it made the whole box heavy. And I actually have a smaller sealed pallet that I use now. I use that with my whenever I'm using my Soltec easel. So while this setup is not something that I've continued to use, I think it was a good experiment. By doing this experiment, especially with the sealed pallet, it showed me that I could use a smaller sealed pallet, one that was more easy to manage. I like using a sealed pallet because when I'm done painting, I can just take the unused paint and put it into the freezer and that keeps the paint fresh. Thanks so much for being here. We'll do this again soon.